Welcome to Straight Talk. R&D is set to be a big part of the government's budget announcements next week as it charts the country's economic path forward. But what's in it for agriculture, especially at a time when some of the largest sectors, such as wool, are fighting for their very survival? And right down at farm level, what difference are farmers going to notice after May 20? Is there likely to be any relief from compliance costs which seem to be being ramped up all the time? Today I'm joined by Ian Proudfoot, KPMG Agribusiness Lead Partner and National Business Review News Editor Ellen Reid. Now Ian, as the author of this recently released report, how much advantage do you think agricultural companies are going to be able to take of the new R&D initiatives? Well Glennis, I think there's going to be a real challenge for New Zealand agricultural companies to gain much benefit from the announcements that John Key made yesterday. I think the big challenge is that the revenue threshold that's been indicated is you need to be spending 5% of your, your revenue on research and development and for most major cooperatives that's a huge amount of money and they're just not spending anywhere close to that at the moment. Um, the other initiatives are, are probably geared at a lower level than most of our, our cooperatives so we'll, we'll probably not give them much benefit either. Although I was pleased to see some of the comments about funding for technology transfer from um, the the CRIs into the industry and I think that's a very good and very positive step. What's your view, Ellen? Do you think that uh, agriculture is largely going to miss out here? Um, yeah, I fear they might mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. One, um, following up on what Ian said and also for my reading of what was said that a lot of small businesses are going to miss out and lots of farmers are effectively set up and lots of farms are effectively set up as small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think they're going to get to take full advantage of it. Mm. Do, do you think that the government is uh, misdirecting where it wants innovation to come from, Ian? Is it uh, deliberately swinging away from the agricultural level uh, to these uh, targeting small to medium companies more? Um, well, John Key made some comments last year saying that he was very focused on the the New Zealand agribusiness sector is a key driver of growth and mm -hmm. indicating that if the, the agricultural sector catches the cold then effectively New Zealand is the, the what, what suffers in the end. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We really need to ensure that we are spending the money in the right places in mm -hmm. the, the in, in, sorry, in the economy in total yes. and um, the, the, the funding that's being proposed is it's focused more I think at the technology sector mm -hmm. however then there needs to be an, a, an appropriate split because 60% of our export revenue comes from the agricultural sector. Mm. And uh, Ellen, we lag way behind uh, some other countries when it comes to R&D spending, uh, not just in the agricultural sector, but uh, generally, don't Across we? Across the economy, we spend about 1.2% of GDP on R&D, if mm. I can get some more acronyms in there. Mm. Australia spends about 1.8% and lots of our major trading partners spend up to 3%. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if we want to stay in touch with our trading partners in terms of productivity and developments and all that kind of stuff, we need to spend more. And that fits with what successive governments have said, is that we need to add value to what we do. So you think, I think it makes sense for them to be targeting the agricultural sector more. It's the backbone of the economy. Mm -hmm. And if we can put the high tech stuff in it as well, then surely it's win-win. Yes, uh, but these seem to be words from the government and perhaps not uh, followed up by actions, uh, particularly with the primary growth partnership, uh, Ian, which has uh, it's struggled to get much traction so far, hasn't it? Well, the conversations we had in preparing our report indicated mm -hmm. that people are finding it very difficult to get funds out of the primary growth partnership. There is a process that's being worked through, but that process is taking an extraordinarily long period of time. Mm -hmm. We really need to be ensuring the funds come out of the government coffers and into the hands of the scientists quickly so that we can get these productivity improvements Ellen was referring to mm -hmm. and actually bank them for New Zealand. Mm -hmm. What about some of the claims that uh, Labor has made after the uh, R&D announcement by government saying that uh, they would have contributed uh, double the amount uh, and uh, they would have looked at uh, of targeting it more. Uh, do you think there's any credibility there uh, based on the fact that they had a rather similar scheme to the primary growth uh, partnership with the Fast Forward initiative, didn't they? Well, the Fast Forward initiative was a $700 million scheme and the funds, though, were never committed to that scheme, as I understand it. The, the challenge that is Labour is putting out there is the, the really around the tax credit regime that they introduced and the, the government took out after its first year in office. Mm -hmm. um, the scheme that's been proposed yesterday doesn't replace the tax credit scheme in terms of its universal and easy application 
and the fact it was a cash refund scheme. So we actually saw companies changing their behaviours to bring research into New Zealand mm -hmm. to actually benefit from the scheme that was put in place. Mm -hmm. We thought that was a positive step for New Zealand and I think there's still a bit to go in the government's policy before it gets back to where that scheme was. Well, because that's a, a big plank in the Australian R&D spending, isn't it, Alan, that they do get so much government assistance? It's, yeah, and it means that companies want to go there and do business and it makes financial sense for them to invest in R&D. Mm. So has mm. the government clawed back? Do you think any of that lost ground uh, from removing those uh, R&D credits? Uh, or uh, is this just a, a, a sort of minor step in that direction? It seems like a minor step. It's, you know, window dressing um, that... Uh, we won't know until it's been in place for six months or a year or something and some people have readjusted their budgets and had a chance to see what they can, what assistance they can get. Um, it hasn't thrilled me so far. No. What about the criticism that's come from scientists, uh, Ian, uh, that uh, a lot of these initiatives, they look to be directed uh, to the short-term research side of things, not mm. the fundamental research that scientists are always more concerned about? I, I think the, the Crown Research Task Force report was really focused on how we get a long-term strategy to drive New Zealand's um, science sector forward. Mm -hmm. I think well, what we're seeing at the moment is some short-term tactical funding strategies being put in place. I, I don't yet see that long-term vision in science funding and the ability for our scientists to say, well, this is actually going to take us 10 years to develop the right solution and, and we need to do this because of the, the sustainability and productivity and in the, the amount of food we need to produce to feed the world going forward. Mm -hmm. Let's actually take some long-term vision and I've, I think we do need strategy along that lines. Mm. What's your view, Ellen? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Mm. It's pretty mm. hard for a new government doing a budget with one eye on the election next mm. year. I mean, it's mid-term now, so they are going to be thinking about that. Um, so, yeah, as, as you say, they haven't done long-term mm. strategies at all. And, mm. I, and I think the government, you know, they're, they're pretty constrained at the moment. There's not a lot of cash. Mm. So they're mm. probably doing what they can do with the cash that's available. Mm. And it's good to see the priority being put towards science and technology and in driving productivity. Mm rather than some of the other areas of spending we've maybe seen in the past. They'd certainly have a very strong advocate uh, now there with uh, Peter Gluckman, wouldn't they, as uh, the Prime Minister's science advisor. Uh, is he working um, as hard as he possibly can behind the scenes to make certain these longer-term uh, plans are being rolled out? Um, the, the, the comments I've heard back, and I know Peter did a, a talk after we released our agribusiness agenda, was that he was completely aligned with the idea of moving New Zealand up the value chain mm. and he's definitely been putting that message out widely mm. and I, I support the comments he's making. Yeah. He was making a comment yesterday, uh, Ellen, that the, the R&D initiatives would be seen as uh, one of the, the greatest moves in the last 50 years uh, for science. That, that was uh, overblown a little bit, wasn't it? I think it? a little bit. I mean, I think his appointment as a science advisor is probably a bigger initiative than mm. what's the actual detail that's come out in mm. the budget. Um, I think having him in his position is really important because it shows externally um, people looking at the country that we're making, taking this seriously, and it also shows people within the country and they gives them a focal point for the discussion. Right. Now, turning to what's likely to be in the rest of the budget, uh, I know a lot of the detail has already been released, um, but uh, for farmers, what's, uh, what's likely to be there that's going to be of value to them? For value to them? Hmm, OK, that's a tricky one. <laughs> um, as you say, most things are pre-released these days, so it's actually no fun on budget day, because mm. you don't know... You, sorry, you do already know what's going to go on. Mm. Um, GST going up to 15% is pretty much a given. Mm -hmm. There may be some reductions in top personal income tax, although, you know, good luck to any farmer that's made it <laughs> to actually get that much of an income given the costs they face. Um, there's going to be no capital gains tax on land, so that's mm -hmm. always a good thing for farmers. Mm -hmm. um, LAQC companies should be left largely unchanged, so that should right. be benefit them. But there's, I can't see anything huge that's going to be of benefit to them at the moment. How long will it take for that increase in GST to be uh, to come into effect? Will that be an overnight uh, situation? No, it takes no. too long for the systems to get um, reconfigured or whatever mm. it is they do with them. Um, we've heard that it will be October the 1st perhaps because that okay. gives time for IRD and other people to get their, their back system sorted. Right, OK. And uh, what about any potential move uh, in the budget on uh, the emissions trading scheme, Ian? That's uh, been talked about a bit behind the scenes. Um, we've, we've had a few rumblings that there's a, a potential the government may look to do something with that scheme. And the, the budget that came out in Australia this week um, also highlighted that they've, they've confirmed their shelving of the ETS scheme. So it, it wouldn't surprise us if we see something in that area. Yeah, but this would be a big back down for the government, wouldn't it, Yeah, Ella? I differ slightly in that one. I mean, I agree with the sentiment. I think they're going to have to back